Andrew Crocker is here now. We're going to talk about the Constitution and maybe some Second Amendment stuff. Andrew is a political science instructor at OTC, Ozarks Technical Community College, and has agreed to join us the first Thursday of each month. First of all, good morning, Andrew, but I can't believe it's already the first Thursday of the next month. That hurried along, didn't it? How does that happen? Oh, I don't know. It, you know, especially when you have a, uh, I have a, a five-month-old, and every day rushes by. Yeah. You look at them, and all of a sudden, they're gripping stuff. Uh-huh. And you're like, how did you start doing that? Just, yep. a, just that not long ago, you were trying to figure out how to drink from a bottle. I've got a granddaughter that will be seven months this month. Yeah. And it just flies. Is she walking yet? I don't know if seven no, months is No, she's trying age. so hard. She's pulling herself up. Yeah. She was over at the house the other day, and I had on pajama pants, and she was pulling herself up with all her might, and she'd stand up in front of me and just look at me and grin. Yeah. Like, ah, yeah. I did it. <laughs> look out. Here I come. Isn't so, that infectious? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've I'll, learned how to do something that's infectious. I'll show you pictures before you leave. She, that's great. Please. She has totally wrapped herself around my uh, my heart. All right. Okay, lots of directions we can go today, and your time is valuable, so I don't want to take you anywhere you don't want to go, or whatever prep you've done for this segment, I don't want to spoil that or waste that. But guns are in the news. Absolutely. And there are so many schools of thought over what the answer is to prevent these horrible mass shootings from happening, and school shootings right now are top of the list because we just had one. Uh, in my opinion, this is not something you can legislate your way out of completely. There's there's things that need to happen there. Um, y- you can't you can't legislate evil. There are mental health issues. There are just mean, cruel people in the world that want to do harm, and they don't have to have a gun to do it. They can use a vehicle. They could use any a number of means to wreak havoc on a mass group of people. So you've got you've got those aspects. And there are so many more that we could walk through. The president was in D.C. yesterday at a conference. He's got more conversations going on today. We've got a local walkout that's going to happen here in Springfield around the time the march happens in Washington, D.C. So lots of emotions, lots of strong feelings. We've got the Constitution, the Second Amendment. Where do you want to start? Where do you want to jump in at? What, what's on your mind today? Well, I'm going to start with the Second Amendment specifically, and then we can kind of talk about some gun control ideas uh, and non-gun control ideas. There's several different ways I think you could approach it. The Second Amendment, uh, of course, says that the, you know a well-regulated militia being necessary for a free state, the right to bear arms shall not be infringed. Um, there are it's really really hard for us to understand the 21st century what exactly this means because we've completely forgotten the context in which it was written the colonies suffered for almost a decade under a standing british army that was being forced into their homes forced into their communities working jobs that they otherwise would work marrying their women and uh one of the first things we did when we created our own new country and earned our independence was take a series of actions through the Bill of Rights to combat the idea that America should have any standing army. That's what the second and paired with the Third Amendment. Third Amendment says you can't house soldiers, the government can't house soldiers in your home during Mm -hmm. a time of peace. Those two amendments were designed to prevent that from occurring. So the Second Amendment says a well-regulated militia is important, therefore we have to be able to bear arms. And what a militia means in 1700s is just a band of citizens that should a threat arrive can grab their muskets, meet at the town square, and address it. That's what the militia meant. And therefore, so the logic was at the time, we don't need a standing army. Obviously, there were some people that stood against that. George Washington despised the idea of a militia rather than a standing army. But though the Second Amendment was originally devised to do exactly that. So that's why you have the phrase about a well-regulated militia is necessary. That's why you have the phrase about an individual bearing arms. Of course, fast forward a generation after that, we had a standing army. Mm -hmm. We had a pretty darn uh, relatively effective one that would get better and better and bigger and more powerful over time. And over time, over a couple generations, the Second Amendment's meaning kind of just changed in culture. And it kind of evolved into being more of an individual's right. And the Supreme Court ruled it was individual's right as recently as 2010. And in that ruling, they cited a bunch of black codes that were passed after the Civil War black codes, super oppressive laws trying to hurt newly freed black people. And um, in those laws, it said black people can't bear arms like free white people can. 
And that's an indication of the culture at the time. The culture was that individuals now, sure. decoupled from any military, decoupled from any militia, had the right to bear arms. And while that's totally an unethical black code law, why it's unconstitutional, it's an indication of where the culture was at that time. Ever since then, we've accepted in our culture that individuals have a right to bear arms. So that's where the Second Amendment comes from. Fascinating. Yeah. So it, you know, um, uh, there are states' rights people who believe that uh, the state as it controls a militia, therefore has the monopoly on the ability to bear arms. Mm -hmm. And then there are individuals' rights people who believe that only individuals really bear that. You know, The truth is, actually, when it was written, it was to prevent a standing army from being uh, oppressive of the American people. But the Supreme Court in 2010? Yeah, 2010, there was a Supreme Court case. Washington, D.C. passed a law, Washington, D.C., for a long time, and I believe still is the murder capital mm -hmm. of the world and uh, passed a law banning handguns. Handguns at the time, far most common way people shoot each other. And Washington, D.C., that case went all the way to the Supreme Court because people didn't want their handguns taken, got all the way to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court ruled that handgun ban unconstitutional. Unconstitutional because individuals have the right to bear arms. And in that ruling, we call it the Heller ruling because it's one of the names involved. In that ruling, they cite the Reconstruction Black Codes and stuff like okay. that as an indication of how long the culture has been individuals bearing arms. So that ruling then stands for all of us in the United States, not just Washington, D.C. Yes. Uh, however, um, it's not absolute. Uh, you know, the uh, handgun ban, unconstitutional. Gun control is constitutional in some cases. Mm -hmm. Like uh, there was an assault weapons ban for about a decade uh, around the turn of the century. That was constitutional and allowed to stand. Um, there are different ways you can um, change the background check system. You can. One thing the president talked about at the gun summit that you talked mm -hmm. about um, was raising the threshold. Uh, if you want to buy an assault weapon, you have to be now. Uh, he suggested you should be 21 and not 18. Mm -hmm. um, that would be a constitutional shift. The big thing is preventing what the Supreme Court would call fundamental access for individuals to guns. As always, you can kind of needle with that at the edges, but that is a central right that cannot be abridged unless the Supreme Court were to someday overrule itself. The hard part about this emotion is so strong right now. And one of the things I love about this show is separating fact from fiction and letting not whether I'm a Republican and you're a Democrat or whatever your political affiliation is, but what are the facts what, what, what do, in this situation? What does the Constitution say? Where are the legal boundaries? What are the requirements? Okay, what's the truth? And then we work out from there. But emotions are so high and so strong right now that that's where everybody is ruling or wanting things to change from and fact and evidence go out the window. Well, you know, one of the reasons why we have an eight or 10 page document, really just depending on your font size, when it comes to the Constitution, <laughs> one of the reasons why this document stood so long is that one sentence, the Second Amendment, is all the, con all the leadership the Constitution gives us when it comes to Second Amendment rights. Uh, just when it comes to gun access rights, that's it. So it really allows, it encourages society-wide debate for decades and decades and generations and generations, which is why we have these discussions over and over again. Andrew Crocker is our guest, political science instructor at OTC, Ozarks Technical Community College. Andrew, how can folks get a hold of you? They have questions or things that they want you to address here in this segment. How can they get a hold of you? Best way to get a hold of me, please email me. I'd love to hear from you at uh, Crocker A, Crocker A at OTC.edu. 847, the show brought to you by Priority Pest Control. 887-9322 is their phone number. They're online at PriorityPestControl.net. Quick check on the weather, a little bit of national sports, and we'll get right back with Andrew here on the KICK Morning Show, 92.3 KICK. One, two, three, four. This is Travis Edwards, pastor of Orchard Crest Baptist Church. I love listening to the KICK Morning Show with Steve Largent on KICK 92.3 FM. Columbine, Virginia Tech, Fort Hood, Sandy Hook, San Bernardino, Pulse Nightclub, and so many more. It's ridiculous. Just one of the president's comments yesterday at the summit. Andrew Crocker is our guest, political science instructor at OTC, Ozarks Technical Community College. And we're talking about the Second Amendment, gun rights, and all the discussion that's going on in the country right now big summit yesterday and i 
you know, I can't really point to anything specific, but my overall feeling after listening to some of it yesterday, I didn't hear it from start Boy, to finish. It was, it was fascinating, wasn't it? It was really bizarre in a couple instances. He can't, President Trump can't stay out of his own way. He's some, he's always somehow manages to make himself the focus instead of the issue. And there were times I thought, man, you got both feet in your mouth. How can you walk? He just, he almost, in my opinion, came off, not making a mockery, but it wasn't that great from, from, from the president of the United States perspective. It became more about him than it did the issue. You know, and, and that's if, concerning. If the, the, we've, we were talking about this during the break, and one of the things that I um, mentioned with this president, it always seems like he wants to defy expectations first and foremost. If you mm-hmm. think this guy's going to zig, he's going to zag. <laughs> because if you take away the bizarre nature of the press, or the um, conference, if you take away the bizarre nature of that, mm-hmm. and just lay down on paper, what were the things the president suggested we should do about gun violence? A lot of it looks like the other party suggested it. Mm -hmm. You know, he suggested the idea of strengthening background checks. That's a Democratic idea for the most part. Some Democrat, a lot of Republicans have signed on to it recently as well. Uh, He talked about um, raising thresholds for buying firearms, Mm -hmm. particularly assault gun uh, assault rifles. In addition to that, uh, he talked about uh, gun confiscation. Like you'd never hear that from. uh, from a Republican president, mm-hmm. uh, a gun confiscation, particularly from people that you know are quote unquote troubled, mm-hmm. um, it, really a fascinating list of ideas uh, being presented by really a guy that campaigned on the exact opposite of those things. And um, it'll be interesting how he feels about it today because we've had this before with immigration and a few other things. He suggests right. ideas that are appealing, and then he kind of flips back, backtracks. So, what was your takeaway from yesterday? What were some things that stood out to you that? You can draw some constitutional parallels. With yeah. It. Well, um, again, the we frequently, with other rights that are not gun rights, we frequently will regulate them or um, uh, uh, issue thresholds to meet them if we feel like it's the responsible thing to do, if we have a compelling interest in doing so. Constitutionally, you can suspend rights if you have a compelling reason to do so. When it comes to access to guns for 18, 19, and 20 year olds, if we as a society feel that we have a compelling interest in preventing, let's say mass shootings at the hands of these young folks in that window of age, then we constitutionally have the right to restrict them, restrict their access. We also constitutionally, as we talked about in the last segment, have the right to restrict access to assault rifles. They are guns, Mm -hmm. but if we have a compelling interest as a society to, let's say, prevent mass shootings, I don't know if getting rid of assault rifles would do the trick, but it's at least, you know, something you could tie into the reason behind that legislation, then theoretically it would pass constitutional muster. These other things involving background checks, I don't see any constitutional problems with those. Um, Really, the big question is, how do you determine somebody is troubled? And then how can you deprive them of their legally obtained firearms constitutionally? That's a huge gray area. I'm not sure how you do it. I mean, um, Nicholas Cruz, uh, the the shooter of Parkland, Mm -hmm. at Parkland, uh, could have been scooped up several times if we had strengthened the system to, you know, pick up folks with with troubles. But if you go back to somebody like um, the Vegas shooter, He had no run-ins with law enforcement whatsoever. How do you, if you can detect ahead of time, how are you able to constitutionally deprive him of what he has? Jeff Ussery, mayor of Republic, has a law enforcement background. And he came on right after the the shooting and, and said, it doesn't matter what you do, you will never completely eliminate mass shootings or mass violence because... Underneath it all, we're an evil society. Uh, people are inherently evil or, or bent towards it to some degree. Now, most of us are connected in our community. We come from stable homes. We are involved in church or, or social networks that we don't go there. But there are those that do. So it becomes much more than, than a, um, a, a legislative issue. When 9-11 happened, Okay, we were free to come in and out of airports. The security was one thing then; it's another thing now, no, of course, and it's yeah. it's evolved and changed as threat levels uh, change. So we need to have something. Something has to change 
constitutionally, I appreciate what you shared this morning and kind of giving us some other things to think about. We've got about a minute and a half, two minutes left. I'll give you the final final say this morning, whatever you'd like to share. Now, if we have a compelling reason to restrict or raise thresholds for certain rights, then it is constitutional to restrict access to certain rights. You can't say whatever you want at any time. Not even you, Steve. You can't. <laughs> you are restricted in your free speech, right? Sure. But uh, same thing with access to guns. But it's not clear to me whether a couple of these ideas the president suggested passes constitutional muster. I'm not saying they don't, right. but the idea of confiscating guns that were legally obtained, well, if we don't have indications ahead of time that are like, if we don't have them like writing 5,000 page manifestos yeah. about how they want to burn the world. But there are enough do? of those that if it was those people that had their guns taken away, then the mass shooting levels go down some. And you'll never you'll never end them all. A goal to shoot for. Yeah. Uh, poor phrasing. <laughs> well, I didn't take it the wrong way. Andrew, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And uh, tell folks again how they can get a hold of you, how no. they can share comments or ask for things for you to share in future. Please, please email Steve or email me. You can email me at Crocker A, Crocker A at OTC.edu. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate it. Thank 859 you. is here. ABC News coming up next.